What's the difference between a commercial excess policy and a commercial umbrella policy? Which one is better? How are they different and how are they similar? I'm going to explain that coming right up. Hi, I'm Gordon Coyle. Welcome back to my channel where I discuss all things related to insurance and risk on the minds of business owners. At the end of this video, I'm going to give some common mistakes made by business owners and insurance agents when it comes to both umbrella and excess insurance policies, so stick around. So you may be looking at proposals of insurance and one includes excess liability insurance and another one includes umbrella liability quote. And you're wondering, what's the difference? Which one is better than the other? So let's start off with defining broadly the two coverage forms. And the first one is, what is commercial umbrella insurance? Commercial umbrella insurance is a policy form that provides increased limits of liability protection over and above a schedule of underlying insurance policies, and it can provide broader protection than what's covered in those underlying policies. An umbrella policy is designed to pick up protection where the underlying liability policies leave off, as well as fill in some gaps and limitations of those underlying policies. And that leads me to the next question. What is commercial excess insurance? A commercial excess insurance policy also provides increased limits of liability protection over one or more underlying policy forms. In most cases, the excess policies will follow the underlying policy form. If it's not covered in the underlying policy, it's not going to be covered in the excess policy. Further, the excess policy is generally not as broad as an umbrella policy. So what is underlying insurance? I've used the term underlying or underlying insurance several times, so I think it makes sense to describe that as well. Underlying insurance are the actual policies that are described in the umbrella or the excess policy known as the schedule of underlying insurance. For example, for a small business owner who may have a BOP policy that includes general liability and non-owned and hired auto liability, plus they have a workers' compensation policy which also includes something called employer's liability. The schedule of underlying insurance in this business owner's case will note the general liability insurance, the non-owned auto liability, and the employer's liability with their policy numbers and their policy dates in the schedule of underlying insurance. A critical element of both the umbrella and excess policies is that if the underlying insurance schedule omits a policy that should be on the schedule, there's going to be a problem and I'm going to discuss that in a moment. So the next question is, how are commercial excess and commercial umbrella policies different? In a nutshell, commercial excess insurance provides additional limits to an underlying policy or policies, while an umbrella policy can expand coverage to include claims and losses outside the scope of those underlying policies. Before I continue, can I ask you to hit that like button and subscribe? That'll help my channel grow so more business owners can see content like this. Thanks. So that may give rise to the question, which one is better, an excess policy or an umbrella policy? Generally speaking, an umbrella policy is a better choice for most business owners, but there are times when an excess policy is the only coverage form available to provide additional limits of protection. In fact, a business may have both an excess and an umbrella policy in their coverage portfolio. This happens when standard coverages such as general liability, auto liability, and employer's liability exist, and an umbrella policy is written over them but let's say they also have management and professional insurance known as D&O and e &O, and the business needs higher limits over those non-standard types of policy forms and an excess liability policy is written over them. The next question is how does an umbrella or excess policy work? As I've mentioned, both policies in their basic sense provides an extra layer or limit of protection over the policies found in the underlying policy schedule. Let's use an example to illustrate this. If your company had a customer slip and fall inside your store or your office or on your premises and they badly injured themselves and they sued you for a million and a half dollars and won, your general liability policy would pay out first on that claim and say that policy had a limit of a million dollars, then that policy is exhausted. Then the umbrella or excess policy would kick in and pay the $500,000 shortfall of that million and a half dollar lawsuit. Who needs excess or umbrella liability protection? In my opinion, all business owners should consider purchasing excess or umbrella protection. It's typically very affordable and provides what I call sleep insurance, knowing that you've got extra protection 
helps you sleep at night. The other thing I want to mention is that many agents will often only quote a million dollar limit on an umbrella policy. If you have a lot to lose in a lawsuit, you should be looking at higher limits of protection. In fact, on your renewals, you should be asking to see options for $3 million, $5 million, or even $10 million, depending on the size of your business. So, let's talk about those common mistakes when it comes to umbrella and excess policies. There are several mistakes that I see when we audit insurance programs for prospective customers when it comes to these policies. The first is when it comes to autos and a couple of things can happen here. When a business elects to insure their autos with a different insurance company than the one that covers their other policies because it's cheaper, it's common for the insurer providing the business owners, workers comp, and umbrella to not include the auto in the underlying schedule of policies. Since the primary insurer doesn't control the auto policy, they don't know if the minimum required limits of liability exist or who the drivers are, so they often refuse to provide umbrella protection over the auto liability exposure. And this is a big problem, as the auto exposure is usually where big liability claims happen. The second situation, and this is a mistake made by insurance agents, is that the business policies include general liability, non-owned and hired auto liability, and employer's liability. And they write an umbrella policy over those coverages. And that's fine. Except the business owner has a private vehicle leased by and registered to the business, but it's insured on that executive's personal auto policy. Since it's an owned auto, it's not covered by the non-owned coverage extension in the business owner's policy, and therefore not covered by the umbrella. Little technical, but this is where a lot of mistakes happen, and they're dangerous mistakes. Finally, we commonly see certain coverages not included in the underlying schedule of policies, which should be included. This is just sloppy behavior by agents and brokers, and it really shouldn't happen. Here's the bottom line. Excess or umbrella liability insurance policies are both similar, but they're also very different, and structuring extra protection over underlying policies is critically important. If you're looking for a team of dedicated experts to work with you on your business insurance, I'd love an opportunity to chat and see if we'd be a good fit for you and your business. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button.